We've already covered the basic background information about doing research in U.S. Census records. Uh, wait a minute, you didn't see that? Well, look down below in the description and there'll be a link to the first one, doing uh, U.S. Uh, census research uh, for genealogy, and that'll be 101, I think it is. This one is 102. But in this part, we're going to tell you where to find those census records and just give you a quick overview of what they look like so you know generally what to expect. Okay, we'll be right back. Hi fellow roadie, thank you for joining me for this new lesson number 102 in doing genealogy research in U.S. Census records. Boy, this, this is this is essential that you get this information down because doing research in the U.S. Census records is going to be vital to finding your family history. So, thanks for joining me. Now, before we get started, I want you to do a couple things for me. Hit that subscribe button down below and hit that like button. Both of those will let me know that this is the sort of video that you'd like to see and also tell Google that too. And YouTube. I mean, Google owns YouTube, so yeah, there you go. And also, ring that bell and click on that bell button. That will ensure that you get an email every time I post a new video so you'll know that it's ready for you to take a look at, okay? Thanks a lot for helping me there. Okay, so where do we find these vital census records that I'm talking about that's so vital for doing your family history? Well, I'm going to tell you. First of all, you can find them at the National Archives in Washington, D.C., or any of their uh, satellite offices around the country. They have, I think, maybe five or six different ones. Now, they will have all the census records on microfilm except for the 1940 census. So you can go in there, load up the microfilm on their readers, and start cranking away. Eh, not the ideal way to do it. That's the way we had to do it in the old days when I was first starting doing census research, but you don't have to do that. But the good thing, they can all be accessed for free through Ancestry.com at all of the National Archives uh, facilities. So that's a free way to do it uh, in a digital way without having to crank through the microfilms. Now the 1940 census can be accessed online through the National Archives website. Uh, there's a, a, an address, 1940census.archives.gov. But you know, I would strongly suggest that you not use this because there is no name indexing, at least as of the recording of this video in uh, August of 2021. So this is really not a very convenient way of using the census records there's better. So let's go on to the next place to find them. It is Ancestry.com. Now, you've probably heard of Ancestry.com or seen their commercials. They do all kind of commercials on TV, and you'll see them advertising you know, on the internet too. And you know, it, it's a great site. It, it really is, but it is a paid subscription site. But to pay for them, at least as of now, the recording of this, you pay about $25 for a, a month, or you can pay uh, $99 for a six month. And of course you can buy by the year or two. Right now I'm paying about $180 a year to have access to Ancestry. Now that's not for everything that Ancestry has. That's just for their US records only. Those are the only ones I get through Ancestry. You can also get a, a, a free trial for them for 14 days. So you can go on and, and do that and see how you like it. But you know, there might also be a, a light version, as I call it, of Ancestry.com available at your local library. It's called Ancestry.com Library Edition, and some libraries will carry it. And if you've got that library card, you can use it for free. The only disadvantage is, is that uh, sometimes, at least the ones I've seen, 
you have to use it inside the library. Now that might not be the case at all libraries. There might be some libraries that let you access it online from your home. But like I said, I, I haven't seen that yet, but if you know, uh, if you know of that being different, if you know that there's some places where you can access it online at home, let me down, let me know down below in the comments. Now, censorship.com, uh, all censorships are available and they're indexed by name, location, uh, you name it. It's great for finding your ancestors. But don't get this, don't purchase this just to get the census records because it's just not worth it just to get only the census records. So they have a lot more information, but here's the but. I strongly suggest that if you're just starting to do your family history research, you've never done any before, if you're just starting, if this is the first time you're gonna look at census records for finding your family history, don't get Ancestry.com. It's not worth paying $180 for a year, $25 for a month, $100 for six months. It, it's just not worth it for that. Having said that, this is a great site. I use it all the time, but I get great use out of it myself. But when you're just starting out, you want to take a look at the census records, don't get Ancestry.com quite yet. You can wait a little while for that. Wait until you get a little deeper into it. Now, you might wonder why I'm saying that. Because Ancestry has a lot of information. Now, that should be great, right? Well, it is in lots of cases. But when you're just starting out, you don't need to have that fire hose of information coming at you because you're not going to be able to drink it in you're not gonna understand it, you're gonna get confused, you're gonna get overwhelmed. So just wait a bit before you actually get uh, subscribed to Ancestry.com. You can use uh, the free trial for 14 days, but don't subscribe to it just yet if you're new or if, or if you're fairly new to finding your family history, okay? I just want you not, not to get uh, bogged down and uh, frustrated with finding your family history. I want you to have fun doing it. So just wait for that Ancestry.com subscription. Now, the next place you can find census records is on a website called MyHeritage.com. That's right, MyHeritage.com. You, you might not have heard of them. They don't advertise. Uh, I don't know that I've ever seen any advertisements for them on, on TV, uh, but they've been around for a little while and they also have a lot of records. Do they have as many as Ancestry.com? No, no, they don't, they don't, but they do have a lot of records and they have some unique things too. But they are a paid subscription site. Once again, you can get a free trial for 14 days. But now as of taping this video to get all of their historical records, it'll cost $189 and up for a year's subscription. Now, once again, as with Ancestry.com, all census years are available and are fully indexed. So uh, hopefully you can find them. Now, the only bad side, now this is, goes for Ancestry and MyHeritage.com too. Uh, you know, people actually, human beings go in and index these census records. When uh, census records are released to these sites, there's actually people Lots of times volunteers to go in and actually index these census records. And the census records, they're handwritten by the census enumerator. So if the person putting in this information to index them I can't read that handwriting or reads the handwriting wrong, uh, well, it might not show up in the, in the index very well. But... Uh, but there's ways around that, and we'll talk about that later on when we do some more uh, instruction on researching into the census records. Now, once again, don't pay for this site just to get the census records. Now, and again, I'd like to suggest that if you're a beginner or if you're fairly new to doing your family history research, don't pay to subscribe to this. 
first get your feet wet in those census records. Uh, and, and some other things you should do too, like interview your, your family and do a, uh, uh, in your home looking for whatever uh, papers or information you already know or can find about your family history inside the house. And there's some other videos I do where I talk about that. But once again, don't subscribe to the site just to get the census records. Once again, too, it's a great site. I love it. I subscribe to it. And both these sites, Ancestry and MyHeritage, there'll be times where you will find they're running a sale on their subscriptions. Like MyHeritage.com, I didn't have that until maybe, oh, maybe about eight or nine months ago, but they were running a sale. I got their biggest package that has the most complete information for half price. So that's a pretty good deal. So I jumped on that. Now when it comes time to renew, I'm probably going to have to be paying twice as much. So there you go. But once again, you can look for those sales too, okay? So where else can you find census records? Here's a good one for you. It's free. It's called FamilySearch.org. Now this is run by the uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, otherwise known as the LDS Church or sometimes known as the Mormons. Now, don't sweat this. Uh, I've been to their facilities. I've used this site for years. Some people are worried that if I sign up for this site and to use the site, you do have to sign up for it. You have to put in your uh, a username and password and of course an email address. They're worried that uh, people will come knocking in their doors to try to sell them on their religion. That's never happened to me. It's never happened to anybody else I know who uses this website. Don't worry about that. Even if you go to their facilities, and I, I won't get into that right now, but even using their, they have certain genealogy or family history facilities in some of their churches. If you go there, they don't even try to talk to you about their religion then. Now, you will get some emails from them, but they will be emails that have to do with the use of this FamilySearch.org website and finding your family history. So you will not get emails about their religion. You will not get emails trying to get you to join their religion. Uh, I, I can say that with complete confidence. The biggest selling point about this site is that it's free, absolutely free. doesn't cost you a thing. And it's fully indexed. You can put in a name and it'll spit out information on that name to you from the census and other records. They have a lot of other records besides the census. But, you know, I, it, I can't su suggest this site highly enough, especially for people new to doing family history research because it's free, because you can dip your toe in at no cost to you. It's, in my opinion, it's not quite as easy to use as, say, Ancestry, but, but it's not difficult to use. I, I can say that. It's not difficult. And there are a lot of other records, like I said, and it might be a little uh, intimidating at first, but if you can just focus just on those census records as you get started, then you're going to go a long way in finding your family history. I can guarantee it. Where else can we find these census records? Well, there's a lot of places you can find them. Uh, and this will include uh, state level, county level, and even local historical or genealogical organizations or societies. Now, not all of these organizations will have census records, but this will vary widely from place to place to place. And there's a lot of these different organizations. I mean, especially when you get down to the local level, it could be uh, the city level, if it's a fairly fairly big city. It can be at the county level. That happens lots of times, and certainly at the state level. And there's even one like that I've uh, belonged to it's called the Western Pennsylvania Genealogical Society, which actually includes all of the counties in the western part of Pennsylvania. So there's even a, a multi 
county organization. Now, even how these records are accessed at, at these different organizations will vary widely. I mean, sometimes uh, they may have hard copies of the census. The one uh, county organization that I go to, uh, they have had it on, I, I guess someone went through and made uh, photocopies of the different uh, census pages uh, at, at, at one time and made this sort of like a, a book so that one year's census with these photocopies of these census pages might be, you know, might be, you know, yay thick, maybe even a little thicker. And someone's gone through and uh, indexed it. But once again, this was just for that county. It wasn't for everywhere, certainly in the country, because this was a county organization. They just concentrated on the county. Now, they may also have it on microfilm, and this, this organization I talked about might have also had it on microfilm, or it might even be on CD. They used to issue, uh, some companies issued the census records on CDs. I don't know that they really do that anymore. Or it might be available online. Uh, now, to go even further into that, once again, it's going to vary wildly, but uh, how can you gain access to these records at these different organizations? It'll be different at each individual organization. Some organizations will welcome everybody in to use all their uh, resources that they might have. Some might request a donation. They might not require it, but they might suggest if you're coming in to use our library and all our records and everything, uh, you might want to think about making a 5 or $10 donation. Or some of them might even request that you become a member of that organization in order to use their library and their resources. You know, at how much will that cost? Once again, it's going to vary from place to place to place. It could be $5 a year. It could be $50 a year. But it's going to vary widely wherever you go. So you're going to have to take a look in your uh, local and county and state organizations to see uh, what what you need to do to be able to use their resources, but it is a great resource, especially those local ones. Uh, the, the county organization that I've been going to in Pennsylvania, they have local people there that volunteer, and they know just a, a, a huge amount of information. They know places, they know names, they even know how to pronounce names that you might not be aware of. Like one of the names of the family that I found in that county. Uh, the name is, well, Shuck, S-H-U-C-K. Now, apparently, the way they pronounce it there is Shuck, not Shuck. I discovered later that further back, before they even came into that county, they would spell their name a couple of different ways, and one of them is S-H-O-O-K. Shuck. So just little things like that, and even just knowing where different local cemeteries are or uh, just giving you a reference on uh, people in that area that know specific information maybe about your family or the house your family lived in. Uh, it's just an, an incredible resource. But once again, these organizations are going to vary widely between place to place to place. But check them out fantastic resource. Okay, so now we're going to go over to my computer and we're going to take a look at a, just a very quick, very quick look and overview of what census records look like, at least for one of the census years. I, I, I can't go through every single census year because there'll, there'll be a little bit of different information on each census year. But once again, let's go over to the computer and I'll show you what they look like. See you over there. This is a full census page. Up top, you see there's a header that appears on, they're almost all are like this, but each year will look a little bit different. Let's zoom in. It tells you this is the 14th census, 1920. 
we go over to the left, it's going to tell you the state and the county where this census enumerator was taking place. We go over to the right side, it tells you the city and even the name of the census enumerator, just in case it happens to be your ancestor. The rest of this is information about all the people he's, he's visiting. Now, for this example, we're just going to zoom in on this family right here. Okay, here you can see the column headers. You can't really read them very good right there. Uh, and I'll give you a hint for looking at those before. But now we see this is number 21. This is the house number. You can see the name of the street on the side. Oh, it's not really visible here. This one's a generic one-up number, as well as this one for the building uh, in the order that they visited them and uh, the family number. They don't have any special meaning. They're just one-up numbers that they, they put in there. Now, if we move over, you can see the, it'll show the uh, sex of the person, of course, the male, the color or race, in this case, white, the age at their last birthday, in this case 50 years old, and their marital status, whether they're married, single, divorced, whatever. Now, we move over here, it shows uh, where they were born and their mother tongue. That will usually be blank if they were born in the United States because they're assuming that their mother tongue, well, is English. Plus, it will also show that same information for the father and mother, where they were born and what their mother tongue is. And there it is, just a real quick view of what a census record looks like, just for one census year. And we looked at a very small part of it. It didn't even look at the whole thing. But that's okay, you just got a very general idea of what they look like and the, the sort of things that they contain. Now, we're going to get into this in a much more detail in the next part of this series, Genealogy Research and U.S. Census Records 103. We're actually going to start doing actual uh, analysis of census information. And we're going to use a tool that I've been using for several years, which has been very helpful for me. Don't worry about it. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. As long as you have access to a either a word processor or a spreadsheet, then it's going to work great for you. So I'm really looking forward to doing it with you. So we'll see you next time on the road to your family history.